Hello YouTube, and today we're gonna to take a look at the Compact Disc Pro XE466 again. It's been a while, but uh, this machine has had some very nice upgrades over the last couple months, and I figured it would uh, really deserve another video, so here we are. As you can see, there are a couple of components on the lid of the machine. This is a uh, Compact Flash to IDE adapter. This came out of my Pentium MMX machine. I figured this would be a bit speedier than the SD card that's currently in there. Uh, but for some reason, I, for the life of me, I couldn't clone the SD card to this compact flash and make it bootable. I know how to make these things bootable, but for some reason when I directly cloned the SD card to this, it would not boot at all. So, yeah, I abandoned that project and this now has an, a copy of Windows 95, um, which I'm really looking forward to testing on this machine uh, more. But uh, for now it has the basic setup, MS-DOS 6 and Windows 3.11. Four work groups, because we have a network card. Another meaningful upgrade that I made is in regard to this bad boy here. This is the original CPU that came in this machine in 1994. This is the Intel 486DX266, 33 megahertz bus, 2 2x multiplier, 66 megahertz. Very nice. And. Uh, that was upgraded to a faster CPU. Took some digging on eBay to find uh, a good bang for the buck type of deal because, uh, you know, I could go for uh, the overdrive, you know, the uh, 5 volt overdrive, 83 megahertz. I think LGR did a video on one of those a while back. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's a pretty nice CPU, but it is hella expensive on eBay. You're looking at way over 100 bucks, and that's just not in the cards for me for a system like this. I really, really didn't want to spend that much. So let's move the camera a bit closer here, so we can take a better look at the main board and the components. As we can see, while I move over here, there is a uh, cable here. This is for a 70 millimeter fan that is connected to the front here, so we get some extra cooling, because we need it for this CPU here. This is the Intel DX4 Overdrive, 100 megahertz. So it's a 100 megahertz. Uh, Intel 486DX4, so it's a 33 megahertz bus, 3x multiplier, what they call a DX4, and not a DX3, well that's just Intel marketing, 4 is better than 3, so, you know. Uh, this is the second fastest CPU that you can fit on this motherboard. This is only a socket 2 machine, and that really limits your options, because you can only run 5 volt CPUs. Now, I've been on eBay, you can buy... Uh, 5 volt to whatever 3.x volt uh, interposer modules that you can click your uh, CPU into and that'll work fine uh, on a 5 volt socket like this. However, those things alone are just, you know, somewhere around 60 70 bucks and that's just as much as this entire CPU cost. So it was about 50 euros shipped from Italy, I think. Yeah, I did buy it before the um, whole. Uh, human malware thing, but, uh, you know, let's just skip over that real quick. <laughs> There's also an extra set of cables back here for the uh, battery. I don't think if I've ever shown this uh, on this machine, but this is a uh, external clock battery. It used to have sticky tape on the bottom, but uh, that sort of stopped being sticky. I'll uh, put some new double-sided tape under it to uh, fasten it securely to the front here. But, uh, you know, so that's the biggest upgrade that I had alongside a cache module over here. I'll just uh, pan around real quick. I think this is a way better view of things. That over there, this here is the cache module. These machines come without any extra cache. And that really, really hurts performance. Uh, when I was playing Doom on this machine, using absolutely no cache, I just could not get it to run. Uh, very well at all, except when running in, in postage stamp mode. <laughs> when I put that in, I could run it almost at full uh, full tilt. When you just have, you know, the uh, bar on the bottom uh, with your health indicator and uh, guns, whatever. With that, just, you know, it was just barely playable. Without that card, absolutely not. This is 256 kilobytes. Uh, some guy in Germany managed to put a couple of them online, and I immediately snapped one up because these things are pretty rare, because they're compact specific, and uh, they were only released for these desk pros and the Prolinias in the 486 generation. 
just one year after this machine was built, they were well into production of the Pentium machines, the uh, Desk Pro 5XX uh, series. And the Prolinia uh, with similar names. And uh, really, uh, you know, they started using the more universal coast modules that you see on many more machines. But this one was specific to these 486 machines, which is terrible. In terms of cards, uh, not that much has changed, I don't think. The most important addition was this, this top card here. This is a Sirius Logic GD5420 ISA graphics card. And uh, it has 256 kilobytes, I think, or is this, uh, or is this a 512? I think this was 256K. And uh, it runs very well, I gotta say. The onboard video on this is CompactQ Vision, and it has a one megabyte frame buffer, so you would expect it to be better. But uh, it's not Visa compatible, and you can't use UniVB with it to run Visa uh, compatible games. So, yeah, I figured go for a cheap card. This one was 20 bucks on eBay. Put it in, worked immediately. So, you know, that's perfect. Sound card is still a Sound Blast to Vibra 16, and underneath that is a network card. Because we're running Windows 4 groups, I also wanted to get the network running, and it is running very well. It's a 10 megabit card, AMD PC net, pretty generic card, but uh, seems to work fine. But other than that, there's not really all that much to say about the machine in terms of the hardware side of things. So uh, everything is working fine, it is booting from SD card. Uh, it is not that quick from the SD card once you boot into Windows 3.11, but it is fine where you're just running DOS and games for DOS. And um, I think that basically concludes the outside and inside tour. Let's just uh, get it up and running and see uh, how she runs nowadays. Uh, let's continue with the good old point the camera at the display type of approach. Oh, by the way, I changed the optical drive. It used to have a CD burner in it that had the perfect uh, faded looks. It would really fit with this machine, but. Uh, it no longer uh, was able to open the tray and it could no longer read discs when you even got the tray open, so uh, I chucked it. I have a whole box full of uh, optical drives, so this DVD ROM will do as well. And now it starts loading MS DOS. I'm not running Oak CD ROM for the CD ROM driver, so we have some extra memory left for the older games that uh, require some more conventional memory. There are full directory listing, there's a lot of stuff on there. This is our games drive, I think. There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't recognize, we'll take a look at this from Windows. It's been a while since I put this machine up, can you tell? <laughs> so I figured we'll make a fun video just to take another look at this thing. Because it really deserves more video content because it is absolutely an awesome little machine. As you can see, it takes a little while to load up even though this is a 100 megahertz machine. The hard drive indicator is just constantly on until it has loaded everything in. It takes a little while. A regular hard drive would definitely be faster, but uh, an SD card is way more convenient. So this is our Windows 3.11 environment. We have the Office Suite installed here. This is Microsoft Office 4.3 Professional. Everything is installed in my native language, which is Dutch, so... There's that, so if you don't recognize some things, that's because it is all in Dutch, because that is more retro to me than English is. In fact, as a kid, I really didn't know any English at all, so... Things change over the years. Do we have anything else that is interesting? Well, just some regular utilities, such as WinZip. We also install the Compact Computer Setup Program, which allows you to change the settings that you otherwise would need access to the BIOS for. 
As you can see, I have disabled the audio chip on the motherboard. I also disabled the parallel port. The serial port is still enabled because I have a serial mouse that I use sometimes with this. And here we can see our processor specifications. It is the 8046DX4 100MHz and 16 megabytes of RAM. System ROM date is bang up to date at the 31st of October 1994. We have a 4GB hard drive or SD card in this case, which is fully detected. And that is basically all we have to show here. For video, it just shows series 54xx multi resolution because it doesn't know what it is. This will do 800 by 600 up to 256 colors with its current memory configuration, so I think it is definitely a 256k card, but that is plenty for the DOS games that you can run on a machine like this. And it is a reasonably fast ISO graphics card. It's one of the faster ones that you can actually run on this. I think the fastest one is the 5428, I think, from Sirius Logic. There might be some other card like the Tseng ET4000 AX or something, but I think they're all pretty close as far as ISO cards are concerned. Being a pretty slow bus, that really means that you can't get that much performance out of it anyway. Um, definitely want to take a look at the browsing the internet on this, because that's just heaps of fun, right? So I've installed Internet Explorer 5, which is the latest browser you can run on 16-bit Windows. This is the 16-bit version. I'm not running it through Win32S. You can run IE5 32-bit on that. But uh, I decided to go with the regular one. So for instance, we can go to Google. If I like it, type properly. And in a few seconds, Google comes up. A gorgeous 256 colors right there. Those animations are really struggling. You could browse for images even, which is nice. Albeit a bit slowly. There are a couple of websites though that you can still access with Windows 3.1 to download software for Windows 3.1. One of my favorites is Win31 Software, which is this one here, which is win31.de, which is a German website. As you can see, I've already searched for it on Google. So let's load a website up here. So if you need some software, this is definitely a good place to start. You can even install Calmira here, so you have a Windows 95 style uh, GUI going. Some media players, plenty of those available. You can even install QuickTime. Win32S is on here some language packs. You can also download IE4 or IE5.0 16-bit right here. They only have the German package here. So if you're German and you want to install a German version of uh, IE5, go to this website, win31.de. Some other stuff, so your updates, you can use the Euro symbol in Windows 3.1. Could be useful if you're uh, making all of your credit reports in Excel 4.0. Very useful indeed. I think it is 4.0, isn't it? Oh, it's 5.0 already in the suite, right? Oh, yeah. Now that is retro right there. Right, let's close that up. <laughs> Excel really hasn't changed ever since, like, the early versions. They've added some features for sure, but the overall layout has really been basically the same. So yeah, that is basically the experience on the Windows 3.1. I also have a good number of games on here, I believe. Or well... It would actually appear that that disk is completely white, and I actually need to reload all my games on this, but... Yeah, I definitely need to uh, fix that real quick, but... You know, I guess this is a reasonably fresh install then. I actually forgot. In that case, I'm wondering why. Oh my! Whoops! Sorry about that. 
on this CD that I have handy in a while back. I burned a couple of DOS benchmarking software to the CD. Just check what's on there. Uh, this is the Windows 95 install CD, right? Okay. In that case, I guess it is a good idea to grab a disc and install a DOS game and see how it runs, right? I'll go do that real quick. All right, let's install one of my favorite racing games on DOS ever, which is Jeff Kremen's Grand Prix 2 which is the Formula 1 season from 1994. We'll do the full install. And I'll also do some gold checks to see if your system even meets the minimum requirements. This is a pretty tough game to run in full detail, and it really has a lot of detail options, which is fun. So as we can see, it requires a 486, which we have. It does not require a Visa, but we do have it. We need 416K of conventional memory free. We have almost 600K. And it requires 8 megabytes of extended memory. We have sufficient of that as well. And it needs a 300 kilobyte or kilobit per second capable CD-ROM drive. Well, we have a DVD drive, so that's all good. Once installed to drive C, which is awful because I don't want to install it on C. I'll install it on D. I guess it doesn't know that D exists. Alright, I'll reboot the machine, install the game, and we'll get to running it. Just wanted to put this clip in here. Just look at it go. This one is not sure I missed DOS game installed for sure. Just look at that baby go. This game is also infamous for completely hanging your system if you misconfigure your, your uh, sound card. So we're going to have some fun with that as well, because that is part of the experience, isn't it? Now it's just copying over some video material. some advice on the buffers here. We don't care about that because the DVD drive is configured differently to a CD-ROM. And now we'll go to the infamous part. We have a Sound Blaster 16, IRQ7. That's what it detected, so let's see if that works. I don't hear anything. Oh, there we go. Yep, that is configured properly. You might think DMA7 is a weird setting. That's because my network card requires RQ5 and DMA5. It's hard coded on the card with jumpers, and you really, when you set other values, other cards start to complain. So I figured the sound card is the easiest to reconfigure in software. So might as well. You reconfigure that. And it works fine, so honestly, don't care that much. Let's start it up. Is that some epic menu music or what? And there we are at the grid. If we're into Formula One, we're currently running with Jos Verstappen, which is the father to Max Verstappen in the current Red Bull car. These are very primitive graphics, but 
details are actually pushed pretty high because you can actually see the uh, advertisements on the uh, on the side there, which is pretty nice. Don't mind my awful driving. I haven't played this game in years, and when I played it as a kid, I basically just played it to push others off the road, which is hella fun. Especially when you enable damage to others, but not to yourself. You can just really push everything and everyone out of the race and win that way. It's a bit easy and it's a bit cheap, I admit. But it works. And this game runs very nice on this machine. We're looking at pretty much 20 FPS, which is what you should expect in this game either way. Smooth overtake there. Very fast track this in the lab. Which I think is also where Ayrton Senna crashed in the 94 season, if I'm not mistaken. Hey you bastard. Now I'm in the gravel. Alright, we're beached. Good. That was the point. This game absolutely ran like ass on the DX266, you really had to run it at minimum settings and then it was pretty playable, especially once we added the cache. Again, that cache really was the most important upgrade that it did to the machine. It really made it feel that much snappier. And uh, this 486 overdrive was definitely a nice bonus. And it made it possible to play games like Duke Nukem 3D, which it really wouldn't do either on the DX2. And it runs fine on the DX4. Really it runs just fine. Especially once you turn the view size two sizes down, I think, and then it runs perfectly smooth. A lot I played through the entire first episode, a couple levels from the second, no problems at all. So you know, that's good to know. I think this is a good place also to end the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.